So sin danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by His love out of thy angry ways. He's the master of thy sin. Be lost His will obey. you to just appreciate in Lord your love lifted me when I was discouraged your love brought me out when I knew no way to go your love directed me when I was lost in sin your love saved me ah Lord I thank you for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life thank you for your love that has redeemed me from sinking in sin thank you for your love that has redeemed me from that problem that confusion thank you oh lord for bringing me back to yourself lord we say we thank you santa lord will bless your name his love is so good it's so kind it's so wonderful it's so awesome Lord we thank you for lifting us up as we depend upon you because you are a dependable God Lord we thank you for this time in your presence Lord come and do something new in our lives Lord come and put a new song in our mouths come and oh Lord make a way where there seems to be no way you are the lifter the glory and the lifter of our head thank you father thank you lord awesome god we serve mighty god we serve is excellent in all his ways is glorious in holiness and fearful in praises yes love has lifted us we were separated from god sin you know had its way in our lives but thank god for love love brought us back to the cross Love brought us back to God. Lord lifted us from nowhere to somewhere. Now we are joint heirs with Christ because he qualified the unqualified. He made us righteous. That is the work of love. So you know the first lifting, as we all know once more, the first lifting is uh, the lifting from darkness to his marvelous light. The shifting you know, the lifting from nowhere to somewhere. We were down trodden. We were confused. We were doing all the wrong things. But the love of Jesus, immediately we accepted him into our lives. What did that love do? The love took us from the merry clay and set our feet on the solid rock. We became qualified. We became heavily seated with Christ. That is why I know that that position of authority God has given to you and I, 
that position of, uh, of blessedness the Lord has given to us. Nobody will take us away from that position in the name of Jesus. We will walk in that consciousness that we are heavenly seated with Christ. That we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. That there is no accusation against us any longer. And because we love God, we will walk in righteousness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. So as we know, in Ephesians chapter 2, Two verse four, Ephesians chapter two verse four. He said, "But God, being rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, what did He do? He saved us. Rich in mercy, rich in mercy, and for what His great love, wherein He loved us. Can you go to five there? Wherein He loved us. What did He do? He saved us by grace, even when we were dead in sin." At quickening us together with Christ. We were dead in sin. But love brought us out. From that dead state. To a quickened state. Lifted us. To a quickened state. And what am, by grace we are saved. Through faith. Verse 6 of it. And as what? Can we read this together? If you are a believer here. And as raised us up. Together, masculine shatter, and made us to sit together what in heavenly places in Christ. That is your first lifting. That is your first lifting. Once that is done, every other thing will fall into place. But if that is not done, then you will just be struggling. We are not supposed to struggle as children of God. We are supposed to. You know, flow with what God is doing. In John chapter 1 verse 12, he said, As many that received him, he gave them power to become what? The sons of God. We are in sonship position. So I want you to have that in your mind. That when Satan comes with his deception, when Satan comes with his accusation, when Satan tells you to even disobey God, you will say, no, there's a love relationship. There's a colonial relationship with me and him. And I will not walk in rebellion. The God of heaven will help us in the name of Jesus. He will help you and I in the name of Jesus. So today, the, 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 the topic I have today is lifted, uh, lifting of the Lord. The lifting of the Lord. The lifting of the Lord. So, as we know, that promotion neither comes from east from west, but from the Lord. It's the God that promotes. If man promotes you, they will just want you to always bow down to them. And any little thing you do, they will withdraw the promotion. But do you know, behind every promotion, behind every lifting up, the hand of God is there. You see, when I was just preparing this and the Lord took me back to my life, I've been very, very fortunate in my journey. And it is my prayer that God will always orchestrate people that will come into your life that will be a path of destiny. Hmm, you are not saying a good amen. Those people who no worry, at least people like them precious, they will know where you call Makaiva. Makaiva area is where you call the marketplace area. Very busy. And any child brought up in that place, except God helped that child. I'm telling you. It's just like downtown, uh, you know, yeah. Where everything happens. Both the selling of everything. It was the art of worry where you have market everything. So that was where I was growing up. My father built a house there. So that was where I was growing up. Just when I could have slided and lost, because I've been fortunate because among my siblings, God has pulled me out. God has pulled me out. In the girls, I do not know how many of them that had even one degree. I don't know. But God in his infinite mercy, while growing up in that place, my father had a decent house, but they, it depends on your surrounding. 
I went to church, and I loved the church, ZKS, where I was born, my family church. And I told my parents, I said, I don't want to go back to Makaiva. My mother said, you are even a vowed child. I vowed you to God. Stay. That was how God pulled me out of that place and relocates me to his house. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? I didn't see any good that came out of many of those who grew up there. Many, 99.999. So your divine positioning is very important for lifting. That was our God. See, and you know, as a teenager, you think a young adult you want to slide. I was sliding away again, again, again. I was trying to help myself. I had my own frustration. Is it relationship? Yes. Is it money? Yes. Is it everything? Yes. Thank God I never tried all those other things. But God, in His infinite mercy, His great love, lifted me again from that swamp of trying to rebel and brought me back to himself. And when he brought me back this time, the God of second chance, he has kept me on this path all these years. He has kept me on this path all these years. I lost my mother when I was age 22. My father was a polygamist. So, of course, he had his love divided with several people. But because of where I grew up in church, the love of God covered me. And I grew up to be the responsible woman I've been now. So, let me tell you, I pray for you and I, that God will position you in that place where your lifting will be inevitable in the name of Jesus. So, lifting is from God. Promotion neither comes from, is from where, but from God. Psalm 75, let's look at it. So, if anybody is promoting you, it's because God has spoken to them. Because along the path I have taken, as I said, I've never, you know, suffered to say, I'm applying for one job, one year, two years, or two months, three months, no. God will just orchestrate things to just fall into place. God will just orchestrate, the divine helpers were always on my way. Just before I raise my this and say, what do you want? What do you want? Take this. That has been my life. Is it because I'm good? No. But God brought divine air pass on my way. So when anybody's helping you, it's because God has spoken to that person, has pushed that person to help you. No, there are so many people who will come and they will not help the person. They will not help the person. So we are going to look at stories. What are the principles behind divine lifting, the lifting of the Lord. As we said in Psalm 75, I say, unto the 75 verse 5, please. 6, 7, I mean. 75 verse 6. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. What, where do promotion come? The, from the Lord. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. He puts one down, and that is a beautiful story of Esther. Vashti had to be demoted, but Esther had to be elevated when the time of divine lifting came. I pray for you that whoever is occupying your position, God will remove them and place you in that position in the name of Jesus. Because if God decides to open the door, nobody can close it. Whether in business, whether in relationship, whether in your health situation, if God decides to heal you, nobody can say they will put sickness in you. Praise the Lord. So that is God for you. So I want you to stay. That this month of divine lifting, all you will always pray, Lord, let me not miss my Kairos moment. Divine lifting has to go with timing. You see, if the time uh, Mordecai told Esther, in uh, uh, Esther chapter 2 now, to say, look, 
join the people that are doing the beauty pageant. That thing only happened once. But she left and the beauty pageant was only once for the queen, next queen. If Esther said, no, I'm too young. I, no, I don't think I should do this. And give all the excuses. Esther will miss it. There will be no opportunity to become a queen. But Esther did not take chances. He obeyed. He obeyed. So divine lifting means the lifting of God. Divine lifting means the lifting from a zero position to an hero position. Divine lifting means an lifting from a, a grass situation to a great situation. Divine lifting means there might be a change from unemployment to gainfully employed. From start, you know, divine lifting means there's a change of starting now before I was miss, but now I am missus. <laughs> I'm prophesying to some of us there. Amen. There will be a divine lifting, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, there will be a change of status. Oh, I was barren, but now I'm fruitful. I was uh, jobless, but now I'm gainfully employed. I it was without permanent residence, but my status has changed. I have my permanent residence. I be. That's divine lifting. Divine lifting. So key into what God is doing. Because if we esteem, it's what to perform. It's what you see oh, with your spirit eyes that God will esteem to perform. I am declaring to you that next level you want in your life. God will give it to you in the name of Jesus. He will give it to you in the name of Jesus. Because there's not, no impossibility with God. These are divine lifting. Someone was sick. The woman with the issue of blood or the woman that had problems. Hunched back for, for 18 years. And Jesus saw her and had mercy upon her. There was a divine lifting. And said, woman, thou art loose. And immediately she straightened up. That was it, now. Huh? So there was divine lifting there. It is my prayer. You, that story is in the book, Luke chapter 13, verse 11 to 17. The woman, we, we dealt with it on Wednesday. The woman was on for 18 years. So it doesn't matter how long that situation has been. I have come as a mouthpiece of God today to tell you that your time of elevation has come. The time of your divine lifting has come because God himself will orchestrate situations to work together for your good in the name of Jesus. And it will put shame to your enemies in the name of Jesus. It was divine lifting for that woman. But do you know, consistently she was coming like Anna to the sanctuary. She was not saying people will laugh at me now because I can't look at people. It was a case of low self-esteem. It was a, a, a case of just looking down in shame. Couldn't look up. But when Jesus saw her in Luke chapter 13, he said, woman, that at loose. A prophetic word first came. Woman, that at loose. Then Jesus still laid his hand upon her and she straightened up. I want you to lay your hands upon your head. So say, Jesus, Holy Spirit, lay your hands upon me. That area that needs to be straightened up in my life. Father, Lord, straighten it. I do not know why I'm saying this. There's something you want God to do. Father, your word has come forth, but Lord, lay your hands upon me. Oh, Lord, lay your hands upon me. That thing, oh, Lord, that I need to be straightened up in my life, in my career, in my marriage, whatever it is, Father, straighten it up. Father, straighten it up. Father, straighten it up. The hands of God was upon Ezekiel. As it was upon Ezekiel, he gave a prophetic word, and dry bones received life. Dry bones received life life. I want you to pray. Father, today, start prophesying to your life that today, I prophesy, I call your name, that this situation in my life, I command to be restored. Oh yes, I want you to call forth those things that were not, as though they were. I want you to start declaring as God puts his hand theoretically or symbolically upon you. I want you to start seeing what God is trying to do in your life. I want you to start calling forth, calling forth, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall come to pass I want you to decree, Lord, let your hands of mercy be upon me. Give me divine speed in this area. Whatever it is, heal me. Take away sickness. Take away dryness. Take away reproach from me in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. There's nothing impossible with you. As we come to meet with you, we know you will solve our problems. 
You know, David said in Psalm 62, verse 5 to 6, he said, my soul waits thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. It's my defense and I shall not be moved. All those things that have been making you to move over the place, that has been confusing you, you do not even know your direction. Today I bind that, that spirit of uh, roller coaster in the name of Jesus. That Sokugo, we call it Sokugo spirit, wandering spirit. I bind it out of your life. You will be, your mind will be stayed on God in the name of Jesus. Because anyone that is unstable, how can God lift the person up? You have to be stable. Hmm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, in the case of Esther... We are paraphrasing because we don't have time, so we paraphrase most of the things. An epoch of destiny was there. So how do we take principles of divine lifting? God uses people to lift you. So he will speak to someone and they will lose their sleep because of you. In the book of Esther chapter 6, verse 10 to 11. When... A man, their enemy, planned for them. Esther chapter 6, verse 10 to 11. Planned for them. That he was going to destroy the Jews. Mordecai has been a faithful man at the gates of the king's palace. You see, when God wants to lift you, he looks for what you have done to use it to lift you. He looks for it. Mordecai has been faithful in the king's court, in the gates. When they planned, two men planned to kill the king, Mordecai knew about it. He didn't join, no someone. He didn't join the council of the ungodly. He decided to separate himself to report the matter to the king. And even when he did that, nobody recognized, nobody remembered. But there came a time. That's why I know that time to favor you has come. Ah, you are not saying a good amen. The time to favor you has come. The time for the lifting has come. The time for the change of your story has come. Remember the enemy was planning gallows for them. But when the time of Remembrance came. A remembrance book was open. God needs what you have done to do, do, lift you up. Then the king said to Amon, first go to nine. Maybe we'll start from, uh, from one. One first. One. One. I was just, thus shall it be one. He said, that night could not the king sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. What happened? And it was found written that Mordecai had told, told of Bitana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on the king Azarus. What happened? And the king said, what honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai? The king's servant. That ministered unto him, there's nothing done for him. Some of you have been in prayers, praying for people standing in the gap, standing praying for the church, standing for your nation. Some of you have done things to, you know, help humanity or help the church or help families. It's as if all the things you are doing, you are a worker in the house, nobody you know, knows about it. But one thing I know, God is not unrighteous to forget your good work. Hebrews 6 verse 10. It's not unrighteous. He will replenish. He will pay you one day. He will see something to say, look, my daughter or my son at a time did this for me. A book was, record was opened. And what happened? The enemy that has planned gallows for this same man was the one that came. What a coincidence. It was the one that the king said, go now and, you know, take this man on the earth because everything you said concerning it, honor this man. And he did it. I pray for you and I that a book of remembrance will be opened for you. 
I pray for you and I that those good things you have done, God himself will repay you in the name of Jesus. The bad things you have done, God will have mercy upon you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, a book of remembrance was opened. God used this king to promote Mordecai. Towards the end of it all, we will see that Mordecai was very, uh, uh, was very, um, was next to the king, was promoted. So we can see that a case like this that favors. So what are the principles now? First, I said divine helpers will be on the way. You need divine helpers. Divine helpers. God will make those people to honor you. Meaning that you must have a relationship first with God so that God is able to make people to what? Help you. That's how it works. If you do not have relationship with God, how can God be speaking to people to help you? Except he wants to help you so that he brings you to himself because everything about lifting is to bring you back to God. That you will honor God with whatever he has done for you. Praise the Lord. Because the, the lifting of uh, Esther, the lifting of Mordecai brought about the safety of the Jews. They were not able to kill them any longer because of the lifting of Esther and uh, Mordecai. The second one is favor. You cannot outplay that. Three people will be in a place and they decide to favor someone. Why? Just because the oil of favor is on that person. How can you explain that Joseph, the uh, uh, second to last of uh, Jacob's children, was the one God showed a dream and said, your, your siblings will bow to you. It's all about favor. <laughs> it's all about favor. And God favored him because we saw that he also had a relationship with God. He did not follow his siblings to do the wrong things. In the book of Genesis chapter 35, he did not follow his siblings to do the wrong thing. So we must station ourselves, position ourselves, so that when the oil of favor is flowing, it will flow upon you. That we arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor us. Oh yes, the set time has come. Psalm 102, verse 13. So I pray for you and I that the time to favor you, that that, that thing you want, that job you want, that promotion you want, that thing that is a pain in you, God himself, because of favor, will bring, bring to pass that your heart desire in the name of Jesus. It will bring to pass that your heart desire in the name of Jesus. Another thing we see, number three, is your divine timing. I've said it before, your positioning in a particular place. Maybe a word is coming forth. And if you are there, you grab it. But if you are not there, you might lose the opportunity. You might lose the opportunity. The, uh, as I said, Esther obeyed and did what Mordecai said. That was the divine. So divine timing is very good. So don't miss your divine timing. Wherever you go, always said, Lord, let me be in the right place at the right time. There's nothing as good as that. Some of us were just in places, suddenly they started giving th some things out. You didn't even know they were going to give it to you, and they are all big, big packages. Just because you were in that uh, organization at that time, you become a beneficiary of that blessing. I want you to pray that, Lord, Order my step so that I will be in the right place at the right time. Father, order my step so that I will be in the right place the right time. I will not miss my Kairos moment. They call it Kairos moment. I will not miss my time of divine visitation in the name of Jesus. Father, I will be in the right place at the right time in the name of Jesus. See in the upper room in, in Acts chapter 2. The, Jesus spoke to 500 but it was only 120 that were what, in the upper room they were the ones that got that initial blessing of the Holy Spirit divine timing divine timing praise the Lord praise the Lord number four for you to have this divine lifting divine lifting you won't 
you want to key into prophetic words. God told by his angel, he told um, Mary, you shall be pregnant. You are highly favored in the book of Luke. Chapter 1. You are highly favored. What happened? Mary was highly favored. Luke chapter two, 1 and 2. two there. Mary was highly favored. And God lifted her from an ordinary virgin girl to be the mother of Jesus. Is that not divine lifting? That's divine lifting. So, you must be sensitive to what God is doing. You must be sensitive so your availability is very important. Always tell Lord, I'm available. You never know. The blessings of God come camouflage as if they are problems. Blessings. They come as issues. But when God gives you the wisdom to solve that problem, it brings about a lifting up. That's the truth about it. We should not run from things as if they are difficult. Always consult with God. What are you trying to teach me in this something? So the, the Mary herself was highly favored and she was available. And God used her, lifted her from an ordinary virgin girl to the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is divine lifting. I pray for you that when your time of visitation comes, you will not uh, miss it. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. And uh, you attract also divine lifting by the friends you have. God doesn't throw people up. God lifts people up. If your circle of friends are all negative people, don't see anything good in this, it will rub up on you. Evil communications corrupts good manners. Just as the ordinary elevator takes people up, the same thing, friends will either take you up or bring you down. So your circle of friends matters in the journey of life. Your circle of friends, Rehoboam missed it. When he went to meet his friends and he lost the kingdom, Rehoboam missed it. Your circle of friends matters. Samson missed it because he had relationship with Delilah, the wrong person, and his vision was taken away. This was a man that they prophesied about his life, but he missed it. I want you to say, I will not miss it in the journey of life. Prophesy to yourself, I will not miss it in the journey of life. In the name of Jesus, I will not miss it. I will not miss it. I will not miss it. In Jesus' name we are praying. Then, diligence. God cannot lift you to a higher level when you've messed up in a smaller level. He tries you with small things. In Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29, so see it a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before what kings. He shall not stand. That means there's a change of level from the low level people low. The Agbero people. You will stand before kings. You will not stand before mean men. So but if you are not diligent, that means the reverse will happen. See it a man not diligent. He will remain with what? The low people. He cannot be uh, promoted. So if whatever God has given to you, do it with all your might. Do it as unto the Lord as we have in Colossians chapter 3. Whatever God has done to you, do it with excellence. And you will discover that God will take you to greater eyes. Because the God we are serving in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we think or ask for. So as you are believing in God for such things, in expectation, are you even expecting the promotion? Or you just say, it's okay, this nine to five job, uh, let me just eat, survive, I'm able to pay my school fees or pay my this. Year. No, 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 no. Think like a, like a millionaire. 
<laughs> We're spiritual millionaires now. Don't limit yourself that others are like that. Then you just say, my case is different. If it is taking people 10 years to achieve this, because I'm a child of God, I am a royalty, I'm favored, my case will be different. Because divine speed is my portion. That's what you are going to say. What is difficult for people should not be difficult for you. Because when people see you, the crown upon your head is that of honor and glory. That's the crown. You are having a crown of honor and glory. Tell me who will dishonor you. Nobody is permitted to dishonor you. I want you to say, I shall not be dishonored. I shall not be dishonored. I shall not be rejected. I shall not be dishonored. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I shall not. Now, for divine lifting also, it will attract your enemies. New lifting, new position, new devils. Because some people will not love it. So before you know it, people will start attacking you because you have been lifted. Can't you see? The woman that uh, Jesus healed in Luke chapter 13, the woman that had hunchback for 18 years. The people in the synagogue, they were angry that Jesus healed the woman. And Jesus said, ah, but this is a daughter of Abraham. Why are you angry? So I want you to know that when God is lifting you up, it will also attract the enemies. But don't worry about them because greater, I want you to declare greater, 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 it's he that is in me than he that is in the world. So it doesn't bother me. Whether they throw stone, I will climb upon those stones to be going higher. To be going higher. Because I will arise and my star will shine. I want you to say, I will arise. I will arise and my star will shine. And shine in the name of Jesus. I will shine in the midst of darkness. I will shine in the midst of discouragement. I will shine wherever I go. In the journey of life, I will shine. I will be above only and not below. That is the word of God for you and I. In the name of Jesus, I am not permitted to fall because God said his angels are in charge over me to guide me in all my ways. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will not stumble in the journey of life. Even if I stumble, the word of God says even the righteous, when they stumble, God will lift them up again in the name of Jesus. You are not permitted to remain on the floor. You are not permitted to remain on the floor. That's why I want you to rise up with only anger just now and start telling the Lord I we arise. Thank you for lifting me up. Thank you for making a way. Thank you for lifting me up emotionally, spiritually, whatever it is. I want you to start declaring Lord, I thank you. I thank you for lifting me up because when you lift me up, people will know it. People will know it and the joy of the Lord will continuously be my strength and nothing can stop my blessing, nothing can uh, challenge my blessing in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Father thank you Father you know in the book of First Peter chapter 5 verse 5 to 6 it said when we humble, I want us to read it First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 to 6. You know, I've said so many things. The empress of destiny, favor your divine timing, you know, your diligence, your availability and all. He said, like, likewise, you younger ones, submit yourself unto the elders. Yea, all of you, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and give grace to the humble. Verse 6 there. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that what will he do? He will exalt you in due time. Part of humility is knowing that you cannot save yourself. Part of humility is is knowing that only God can save you. I do not know the person that doesn't have a relationship with God. 
you will just be living a, 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 a life of toiling, labor. God wants to carry the yoke for you. If you do not have a relationship with him, or those of you watching me online, if you've not made Christ your Savior, because the beginning of lifting is a relationship with him. And it takes you from an helpless state to a state where you are heavenly seated with him. You might just want to tell him, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I humble myself to you. Come and take absolute control. A man that wants to control himself will only run into ditch. But when the Lord is your shepherd, is your leader, he will guide you in the right paths. So just accept him. And tell him you are sorry for whatever way you've not allowed him to control your life, the, the, the wrong life you've lived. We all did it at a time, but thank God for grace that brought us through. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We might have some people here, as you see, you might still be in your, you know, a state of pride. In that uh, book of Job chapter 22, maybe we just read it, Job chapter 22 there. Go to 22 now, 22, yeah. Receive, I pray thee, the love from his mouth. That's my charge to you and I. Receive, I pray thee, the love from his mouth. And lay up his words in thy heart. Don't be adding. If you want lifting, you don't need to be toiling. You don't want to live a life that does not glorify God. Don't be, you know, remain in your old, deceitful, wicked state. So, verse 23. If thou return, can we read it together, church? If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be what? Built up. That means if you return to the Almighty, you shall be what? Lifted up. You shall be built up. Thou shalt put away what iniquity far from what thy tabernacle. You shall put it away. Don't continue in your old paths. Because you do that, what will happen? Thou shalt lay up gold as dust and gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Because you put away iniquity. Because you take the word of God, you lay it upon your heart, God is going to elevate you, you know, in, 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 in plenty of gold and silver. Yea, the Almighty be thy defense. Because you put away the wrong things and obey God, God is going to defend whatever you have and going to lift you up. That is the word of God. Thou shalt have plenty of silver. 26. For then shall thou have thy delight in what the Almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God. This is the place of lifting. In resources, in everything, you delight in God. God will continuously lift you up. Now 28 and 29, the very one. Thou shalt also decree thee. Can you see the condition for decreeing? The condition for decree is that I put away evil. I put, take the word of God. I speak the word of God. I do the right thing. That is when I am in a better position to decree something. Thou shalt also decree a thing and what? It shall be established unto thee. And thy light shall shine what? Upon thy ways. Now verse 29. When men are cast down, then thou shalt what say what? There is a lifting up, and it shall live, save what the humble. It's as simple as that. Are you putting the word of God? Are you having delight in Him? Or the word of God, or relationship with God is nothing to you. The only way you can be lifted, the only way you can have this surplus of things, 
is a relationship with God. I want us to pray that, Lord, whatever way I'm not delighting in you, Father, have mercy. Whatever way I am not delighting in you, I am not putting off the wicked things, the wrong things. Father, have mercy. Help me to walk in the right direction. Help me to walk in the right direction so that the blessings that come with obedience will be upon my life in the name of Jesus. The word of God says, if you diligently, you know, obey. That is when you will be above only and not below. I want you to pray, Father, help me to, to do the right thing so that the blessings that come with obedience will be my portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory, take all the honor. The Lord just ministered to me, someone might have yes, something you are believing God for that will take your statue to another level. And if you want me to pray with you, you can just lift up your hands. There's something you are believing God that will change your statue. It might be in career, it might be whatever it is. God wants me to pray with you. Father, Lord, I agree in prayer with this, your children. Your word says, when two of us agree over something, it shall be established in heaven. As many, oh Lord, that are lifting up their heads. Father, today by mercy, Father, Lord, meet them at that point of their need. Father, speak life to every dead situation. Bring, bring oh Lord, oil out of the rock for them. In the name of Jesus, make life to be easier for them. Make that project to comfort. May there be an, a, 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 an approver concerning that job, concerning that application. In the name of Jesus, any prince of Pasha that will want to hold your, your blessing, I bind their activities out of your life in the name of Jesus. Weeping is only permitted for a night. There's a joy even in the morning. Father, Lord, when you lift one up, when you open the door, nobody can shut it. Father, Lord, we are agreeing that before the end of this march, testimonies will erupt in the name of Jesus. Testimonies will erupt in the name of Jesus. I seal, oh Lord, these blessings within the blood of Jesus. Father, Lord, there will be, there will be testifier all over this house and those watching me online, oh Father, testimonies will be galore in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answers to prayer, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for, for healing. Thank you for making this to fulfill your word in our lives. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Let's have a seat. Let's have a seat. Just thank God, Lord. Thank you for lifting me up. Thank you because as you thank God, remember, he's going to do those things you are believing him for. Just thank him concerning that uh, health situation for healing. Concerning that paper. Concerning the relationship. Concerning your traveling documents. Whatever it is, just start thanking him. Just thank him for the children. Thank him for healing. Thank him for, you know, contract. Whatever it is, God is faithful. He said, when you call upon me, I will answer. Just thank him. Lord, we say we thank you. As a church, we thank you. For your love that lifted us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for our children. Thank you, we are once more in your sanctuary. Thank you, you've, you've protected us. You've not allowed us to lose anyone. Father, we thank you for lifting our head up. Yes, thank you for lifting our head up, oh Lord. We just want to bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lifted. I am lifted. I am lifted by the Lord out of sin and sorrow into the presence of the Lord. Lift 
declaration that's our song for lifting us up from sorrow, from sickness, from shame, from disgrace, from limitations. Thank you for lifting us and bringing us to the place of abundance. We give you all the glory. As we go out this week, oh Lord, we pray that letters of joy will come our way in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, as we go out this week, oh Lord, by your almightiness, you will lift us beyond all prevailing circumstances in the name of Jesus. We shall be qualified even where we seem not to be qualified in the name of Jesus. Just as you lifted Daniel to be in high position, Father, let our lifting, oh Lord, come speedily in the name of Jesus. Thank you once more. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. And may he lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. Now and forevermore. For in Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Can we share the grace in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Amen.